technically our zodiac signs are not compatible. They're actually, I think, couldn't be further from like what your love match is supposed to be. Yeah. But I would argue that that's what makes us really great. All right, so I know your zodiac sign is Sagittarius. Yes. And you know mine is Virgo. And we actually just had Triple this- Triple Virgo. Just had this conversation because we were teaching the kids about zodiac signs and technically our zodiac signs are not compatible. They're actually, I think, couldn't be further from like what your love match is supposed to be. We push each other in different ways or basically he pushes our family in one way. Yeah. And then I stress out about the laundry. So that's what goes on in He stresses house. out about everything. Can I ask you, just like reflecting on this last season and everything, what moments throughout your day like really make you the happiest now besides waking up to me? Well, I don't wake up to you because you've been up for three hours. So oh, yeah. I wake up by myself every day. Or but you wake up to a house with candles and music on. That's true. No, I, I think for me, it's probably the weekends because I like that we are laser focused on the family and on our kids. I like that we just like, um, we always go to like a fun brunch or from lunch with them. Um, I like coming home and having rest time and throwing on a movie for the children. So it's really our time together on the weekends. I think that I love the most. The moments in between. Yeah, yeah. It's not the grand moments. It's not like the big Some vacation. Of the Some of them are, are great, but it's it really is those little moments. Those, you know, getting ready for school, um, just hanging out as a family. How do you think that our bond? has evolved over the course of creating a family together. I was just thinking, how can we spend more time together? Yeah, to this is a really this great bond. opportunity for you to explain to everybody how much you love me and why. Oh, Go. Well, roll the tape. Um, no, I think um, we're better listeners. Okay. Um, we are, and I think, you know, parenting for us, it, and it was a really interesting exercise because one of the first things we did was talk about what we could provide for each other right. and what we couldn't provide. And and we've come up with a really nice rhythm. And I think, you know, when you first meet somebody, it's like very territorial, pissing on trees, trying to prove yourself, make sure how somebody hears this. And at this point in our lives, um, we trust each other. And I think that's, it's just a really beautiful thing. We don't fight about the small stuff anymore because yeah. this doesn't matter. And I would add that I think that we don't we're not mad at each other for what we aren't. We tend to focus more on what we both bring, exactly. even though those are different things. Yeah, just put it in a journal. You know, raised, we're two dads at the end of the day, still raising a daughter. How has it been for you? How's that, what's that experience meant to you? I think a couple of things. One, I'm really always and will always be grateful um, to you for being such an amazing father, but also to the fact that we started having kids when I was older. Poppy was, I was 41 when Poppy was born. And so I, I feel- older. I was 30. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. but I was. Yeah. And the point is, I was glad that I was at the stage of life where I could slow down enough. Um, I wasn't 25, 26 years old. My mom had me at 23. And I feel oh. like I've been super present for both of our kids. And that is, I think, my favorite thing about it. Yeah. It's also just a really unique thing raising a woman, you know, because you realize, I mean, we always knew how great and smart and talented mm -hmm. and incredibly um, creative women are, but raising a woman, you realize that they should really be running the world. Um, and Poppy, is kind of, since the day she's been born, she's just been teaching us. Um, and so we just try to keep her safe out of harm's way and we just learn from her every day. Yeah, I don't mind a manner here or there too. Well, you she's know? got nothing but manners. Yeah, but I'm just saying that, well, that's because that was it's reinforced. Like, oh, yeah. Do you see a piece of me in either of our kids? I see all of you in our children. I see um, your humor and your zest for life and your social skills in our daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and I see your sweetness and the side of you that you <laughs> Most people, you know, lead with. Yeah. Um, but I see a sweetness and a tenderness in our son that reminds me of you. What about our kids? Do you see? Do you see any of me in our children? Not really. I was thinking about it, and yeah. I don't really yeah. see weird much. As much time as I spend with them. Yeah, it's so strange. No, of course I do. I mean, I I think both of them, their sensitivity, their communication skills are from you. Um, their um, their vulnerability is from you. So the fact that they feel safe enough to tell us everything for now, hopefully that'll last forever. But I see all of that in them. No humor, huh? No, I mean, you just said <laughs> the humor was for me. <laughs>
Is our life what you imagined for yourself when you were younger? I would answer that by saying not at all because I didn't, Oprah always used to say, you have to dream a dream, like God has a bigger dream than you can dream for yourself. And, and I think that with our show, with our family, with everything that we do, we are dreaming, both of us, I would venture to say, are, are living a bigger dream than either one of us had for, for ourselves when we were younger. Well, I didn't know this was possible. To be married legally, to have children, um, to create a family, and then to, as a family, be ending up in people's living rooms so that they could see that we love exactly the same way that they do.